What it do? <laughs> hey, how you doing? Good. Summer's all in full swing for you. I see you've already started and you're ready to go. And, and finally, the, the weather has looked like normal California weather and you're having a good time with your daughter. It's great to see. Unbelievable. Yes, we've had, um, yes, we're out walking and enjoying the sun. I, I even got some color. Um, yes. How's New York? Because I know you're in New York. I bet it's... I'm in I am. I'm. I'm. I'm in New York. It's. Uh. It's. My, it's really my favorite city. There's so much going on here all the time, as you know. I know, you frequently visit New York, but it's. It's so. It's one of those where you have to get your mind almost in order of a wave of people just coming at you, and you have to walk at a faster pace than you normally walk. Otherwise, people get mad at you. But. But I love it. Everywhere you walk, and I, and I love to walk when I'm in the city, and just to see things that you see on TV. Obviously, I'm a TV person, so. I'm like, I think something was filmed there and there's something filmed there and that movie's here. And I, I love all that stuff. And then it, the, the food is fantastic too. There's nothing about it that I dislike. A little human, but I, I'm not going to complain. It's my choice to to come this time of the year. But how long do you think you could stay there? Okay, that's the question I was going to ask you. Could you live here? And you know what? It, it bothers me that I always consider myself as someone that's a, a tough guy that can sit there and adapt to things pretty quickly. Obviously, I can't. I, you know, I love Southern California. I mean, I love Los Angeles. I love San Diego. I love everything about Southern California. San Francisco is not exactly for me, but I couldn't. And and I don't think I could survive on the subways. And I don't think I could survive with the dirtiness. I, it just it's just not the same. It's just not the same for me as California. Yeah, I, I really like to go back and forth. Back, I need a break from it. But I also need a break from California and be in New York. I just um, because we're so used to like quiet. We're so used to going for a walk and being able to be alone, like in a park or on a street or something like that with no noise. And you just don't get that there. There's like a piece that's taken from you, you know, like piece, P-E-A-C-E, taken from you that um, you don't get there that you get here. So and forget, I don't know how people raise kids there. Uh, That part, I've taken my babies there and... um, I could never do it. I, I hands down to all these parents, because unless you're super wealthy and you have a driver, I don't know how you get around with little ones. I don't know how you do it. And um, but yes, the excitement, the energy, all of that is yeah, it's uncomparable. I love it there. You know what? It's even a chore if you've never been here before. Just getting from the airport to your hotel. Like I, I see all the the Europeans that are here right now, and I'm like, how? I mean, English is a second language. How did you figure out even how to get to Manhattan? It is it is not easy because people aren't willing to help you out in New York either. You ask questions and they walk by like you aren't even talking. Well, I think Europeans are more savvy to like public transportation and uh, metropolitan cities and things like that. I don't think they're as like wimpy as Californians or Americans. Like they're, right. they're really, like they know how to get around. They travel around Europe. You know, they go from country to country on trains and um, subways and all of that. So I think that they're more savvy than we are. So I, I probably would look to them first. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's, a, that's a good point. Look, well, <laughs> When you're here, like in my mind, I always think I want to come here enough where I feel like I master the city. Like even if I don't live here, I could find my way around. I cannot figure out the streets. I, I don't understand 7th and, and West 28th Street. All that stuff throws me off. I mean, listen, I, you can understand the grid. You know, it's a, it's a simple grid on how the city runs. But like try remembering was I, you know, what part of the city were you in when you saw that place? Like, good luck. I think people that live there forever, I, I know locals and we walk and they still get all like, I'm not sure where that was. Um, so, you know, it's a huge city with a lot going on. Just love it. So much. I do. I love it. I get lost I here. It. I get lost in Burbank. <laughs> <laughs> It's the maps on your phone that have made life extremely easier. I can't imagine what it was like before that. Oh, I got to tell you, I went and visited a boyfriend. He was a model in um, Paris. And um, so we go and he's staying at his hotel. I meet him there and then we get ready and we go out and meet some friends and we go out for dinner and drinks. And then when it's time to go back, the subway is closed. And the only thing we know is what subway stop it was at. (laughs) Oh, no. Yeah, we're lost. We're lost walking around Paris and we're like, God, it's late at night. It starts raining. It, it, it just was, it was one of those comical, like dumb and dumber, prettier and prettier trying to like find their way home. <laughs> and we were so stupid. And we just were like, I don't, we don't know. I don't know how to, we finally found it. But um, 
yeah, it's not easy. It's, you know, it's not easy. It is not like LA. <laughs> Do you speak all. French? No. Do you speak French? No. No. I only speak okay, English. That's... And I don't even do that very well. So uh, no. <laughs> I'm, I'm with you. A lot of profanity, if you want to count that as a, as a foreign language. But that's sure. uh, that that's why that's where I'm at. Those two. I'm pretty yeah, good. That's about it. <laughs> I'm with you, Dave. I'm with you. So Court <laughs> Hemelstein, my friend, reached out to me. He said the Jeter thing was probably 2003. Um, he wanted to, again, thank Jeter for the amazing seats we had behind home plate at Yankee Stadium. <laughs> He That's said, awesome. Everything was amazing. He was first class, such a nice guy, which I agree with. And um, so that's that part. Then I, I, I did find a new product. I know you I know you go out and secretly buy all the products that I, I am curious to know what you're using, though. I am. I'm always curious. Uh, yeah. And I you know, listen. So am I. I'm always like trying new things. So um, Charlotte Til Tilbury, I've been trying to commit because it's pricier. And I just didn't know. And I, but I love all our commercials. And um, so I bought it. I bought it. I love the packaging. Um, okay. I got the um, airbrush flawless finish. I got it in medium. It's kind of dark, but I'm dark in the summer. And um, I don't know about it being like a complete, it says like a complete complexion corrector. I don't know about that, but I do feel like it's glowy. I don't have any other makeup on. I only put the powder on. I don't have like a foundation on. And I think I look glowy and it's not cakey and it's not in my wrinkles. And um, so I'm giving it a full thumbs up. Nice. I love it. I love it. I love it. Nice. Definitely, You can go into Sephora and try it. You don't have to commit. That's what I love about Sephora. You can go try it without committing. So, yeah. There you go. Nothing that your daughter's going to steal yet, right? No. It's too dark. <laughs> <laughs> not the right shade um so this episode is sort of going to be a rant right like we're going to rant a little bit and um a well-deserved rant and so when we spoke about uh when i was just drugged through the mud the other day in media there was something that i didn't bring up that i thought about it and i was like you know i should talk about this but i think that people's personal finances are not anybody's business just like right. i don't think People's like religion or political beliefs or anything or should ever be shared. I think it's like a quiet personal thing. You don't do it. But I pride Agreed. myself on always being um, financially responsible and always living within my means and always, I always um, invested well, especially for such a young, like banshee child that I was. Um, I always did well. Who, so who, I, who helped you out? Who helped you out with that? Just curious. Was that something you knew as a, at a young age or did you have people that looked out for you? Well, he definitely had accountants and things like that. But listen, you know, uh, I wasn't I wasn't dealing with so much money that, you know, they were like nobody ever got me into stocks, um, which is something that I still want to get into. I, I, I feel weird that I don't know about stocks and I'm not in, I'm not invested in it. But what I did know and just naturally organically was real estate. So when they said you have to spend this money on something. You've got too much money sitting. Smart. So I started buying real estate. And that was at, you know, 11. You know, I bought wow. my actual house that I lived in at 15. Before that, it was wow. like, um, it was office buildings, apartment buildings, you know, rental, rental property, commercial. So um, I always pride myself on that. And I always read this whole thing about she had financial hardship and she filed bankruptcy and all this. But I just kind of want to set the record straight because I don't want to bring this up when, when we bring our guests on because I don't, I don't want it to be about me. I want to get me out of the way, but it really just, I just, it drives me crazy. I owned a property and it happened to be one that was in my personal name and it was a good investment. I had a lot of equity in the home and the bank, I won't say their name, um, was giving out bad loans and they were they were telling people that they qualified for a refi a refinance and then they were when you do a refi in case anybody has never done it before you stop making mortgage payments for a couple months and then yeah. they they bundle it all back together and you start fresh with this new deal right and what they were doing is they were having people fall behind and then they were um they were not following through with the refis and I, lucky enough, was able to hire a lawyer 
to go fight and go go to battle with them. And it's a major, major bank, a ma major lender. Um, there was no way I'm going to fight them. And they ended up losing a, a class action lawsuit. And everybody yeah. sued them. And people, they had to dish out a lot of money. But people lost their homes. They lost their equity. They lost everything. So what I did is because it was just one property, but it was like, listen, it was like $1.3 million in equity. So I could either take the little hit of taking a bankruptcy because what the lawyer has to do to fight them is do like this emergency bankruptcy thing. And then they go back into negotiation. And then the, the bank tries to put it back on auction, the property back on auction. And then they go down and they file another little um, emergency bankruptcy. It's really not that big of a deal. It's not anything. I've never been in debt. I've never racked up bills. It just chaps my hide when um, they just write this over and over without understanding. And I chose to follow through with the bankruptcy, take sell the property and take my equity, take my cash. And my credit was bad for seven years. But the truth is not a lot of my stuff is in my name. I have corporations. I have things. So it wasn't that big of a deal. Other people, they lost everything, you know, and it was yeah. horrible. And I'm glad the bank had to make right on it. Um, although these people never recouped what they lost. Um, that would have been me. I would have got like the $20,000 payment payout and would have been out of a property and had a a foreclosure on my credit and lost all my equity. I wasn't going to go that route. So, um, you know, just to clear that up, that was why I filed a bankruptcy. It was not because I was out spending above my limit. It was not because of anything except a, a bad, a bank doing bad deals. And that was the smartest way to handle it. And I'm not that rich that a hundred one one 1.3 million is like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm no, going to hold on to that. Okay. So, um, well, it's the matter of being taken advantage of. Nobody wants to be taken advantage of, you know, no. and this, this is one of the things that, that I love about the show is that, you know, here you are as a public figure deciding to do this podcast and getting to know you, but you know, people always think it's great being a public figure. They only think about the glamour stuff and, you know, the old saying, you know, those who live in glass houses shouldn't throw stones. Yeah. I mean, with social media, so many people are trying to create a world where they now become a public figure. I mean, it's like a race to become a public figure. And I always think, man, you don't know what you're getting into. Yeah. I mean, you have no idea that it's not what you think. I mean, you know, I have a son who was a, a college football player at a very popular college. And I was like, all right, now he becomes a public figure. I chose to become a pub public figure. My wife did not choose to become a public figure. That's why I usually don't post a lot of things on social media with her because that's not the career she chose. And so when you talk about the situation that you were in people love to build you up sweet nicole little kid we all watched you grow up then they want to see you fall and yeah. then they hopefully will want to build you up again but it's it's one of those where just one thing where they don't have all the facts look at nicole this is a, this is newsworthy all of a sudden and it, the story's wrong that's, well, that's yeah. what's so it's frustrating like, honestly what does that say about journalism today which we were, we are going to get into in a minute journalism today has sunken to such an all-time low from the lack of research, uh, they just copy and paste. And they copy and paste, like, because I'm big on grammar, they, they typos, and they're copying and pasting typos. And if you read enough articles, you'll see it over and over, and it's the same typo, and you know they've just copy and pasted. So it's like, what has journalism become? And they want to criticize us. Let's talk about you and your integrity and your job because it's and i don't mean this to all journalists obviously but there are certain ones out there and you know who you are that you are dialing it in you are lazy af and you are loving and you're still riding that that tale of breaking people down especially women and dragging them through the mud to think that you're going to get ratings and I, I'm here to tell you, start reading the comments. When you get all those hundreds and thousands of comments, they're not in your favor. They're not positive for you. So, you know, where is your integrity? So with that being said, I would love to introduce my good, longtime, beautiful, gorgeous friend, great actress, great human being, Miss Erica Alaniak. Well, thank you. I feel like I have to do a little. Oh yes, <laughs> like the Fourth of July parade. <laughs> yeah. Da, 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 da. How are you guys? So good. Doing fantastic. How are you? I'm really good, and thank you so much for having me on. 
um, really excited to be here. We are so happy to have you and so grateful you came on because, you know, and I saw that um, you got drugged through the mud the other day, too, so to speak. And um, then I saw your post of you being, you know, visibly upset because I don't think it's happened to you before, has it? Or not very no, much? No, it has, actually. And I'm so glad you're having me on so I can talk about it. That's not even close to the the worst of what I've seen. I, I've, I've been doing this, what, at this point now, I don't know, 45 freaking years. And it's like, I've heard it all about myself. I mean, they'll take a picture of you after, you know, working in South Africa, 32 hours of flying, getting off the airplane, literally looking like a walking corpse, and then catching you like, <laughs> and then putting a picture of Baywatch next to it. And the headlines read, no longer fresh faced, you know. I've heard it all before, but that particular day, a few things, you know, it's been like this sort of combo platter of things. Um, I think because the documentary is coming, you know, Baywatch the American Dream, which we'll talk about, and I'm so proud of you for freaking doing. Um, so, you know, you know, they're out there trying to stir up whatever they can because there's rumors that this wonderful thing is coming out. So now let's go see what dirt we can dig up on the actors, right? So a few weeks ago, actually, I'd taken my daughter out to Malibu to meet a friend. And I mean, people are not very discreet. <laughs> I'm sitting there trying to eat one of the best sandwiches, by the way, of my life. I was so irritated. I'm eating this sandwich and I see this guy like he's standing in front of me with his camera and he's trying to pretend like he's not taking pictures, like he's swiping like this. Seriously. So, I, you know, I'm ignoring him. And then I'm taking a big bite and he's right to the side of me. And I'm like, oh, that's going to be great. So I threw out my sandwich. <laughs> was so mad. It was so good. And I walk away and he comes up to me after and he said, I'm a really big fan. And I said, well, I, I just said, thank you so much. And I walked away. But I'm thinking, you know, gosh, common sense. You know, do you take a picture of your sister or your kid or your friend while they're eating food? You know, you wait when you're at family gathering or whatever. When you're out, you don't do that. Maybe just wait till someone's done and then come up and I'll take a freaking picture with you. But what had happened there is I went about my business. My kid was out with her friend and then it was time for me to drive my kid home and he's following me around and taking more pictures and following me. Well, now I'm very uh, nervous because he's going to see my license plate. He can follow us home. So that had happened just like three weeks prior to the incident that you were just now talking about. I was out walking my dog. Um, I have been going through some personal struggles. I was listening to your show while you guys were talking. You know, there are certain things that are nobody's business. Um, I think a lot of things are nobody's business. No matter who you are, what do you want to share, right? And so for me, I have some medical things going on that are very personal. Um, and I'm fine. I'm not dying. I don't want to put paint this picture that isn't deserved, you know, like, oh, you know, I don't want to say not deserved. But yeah, I'm, I'm fine. I'm handling it. But it's made, I put on some weight and it's made it really difficult, even more challenging than it usually is for me to lose weight. Um, one of the things I love is keto. And I've lost so much weight on keto and I always yo-yo, but I can't do it anymore because I actually have a, a hiatal hernia, which is when you, your stomach goes up into your esophagus and is it's, it's very painful, extraordinarily. I have something else going on that I have to have a, a surgery for. So I haven't been able to get my diet's been a wreck and I finally figured that out. Um, and I really haven't been able to work out at the fitness level that I normally would just because the pain is crazy. And then there you are, you know, you, God forbid you go outside, you know, in front of your home and walk your dog and are taken, you know, have someone taking photos of you in the worst lighting, the worst, look, a 12 year old can take a bad picture. <laughs> you know, it's like you can get crazy angles and bad lighting, but I feel like they're looking for them on purpose. And I was scared because to be honest with you, it wasn't an obvious paparazzi situation. It was a dude in a truck that was driving by that I didn't recognize. And then next thing you know, he's already parked down by where I haven't even reached yet in the opposite direction. Then I know something's up and he's following me and I go through a meadow and he's already parked on the other street and now I'm getting weirded out. So I'm trying to hide because I don't know what's happening and take my dog home. Another guy comes out down the street and then I could see him snapping pictures and I was, I was so angry. Um, 
I was so angry. I spent my last birthday and almost a year ago with the police and a detective because I had a stalker fly in from Texas to my front door. So, you know, I'm not telling you anything you don't know, but then the, the, the paparazzi say the city I live in and I'm not Julia Roberts living in a gated community. You know, I, I'm open here. I have a child. So I was pissed. I actually wasn't sad. And then just like you said, I started reading the comments. I'm like, don't do it. Erica, just don't do it. You already know how horrible it's going to be. Don't do it. And of course we're human. So what do we do? <laughs> Where is it? <laughs> you go right there. And they were so kind. They were so supportive. And they were like screaming in caps at the New York Post, which was the syndication. Happy to say uh, how horrible, you know? And, and they were like, can this girl not walk outside and with her dog? Does she have to wear makeup? Can she be 53? Can she? And then they were, you know, it was just nice. And so I started crying because I felt so loved. I felt supported. My, there was a knock at my door and I was petrified. But my friends from uh, South Dakota sent flowers. My friend who moved to North Carolina, a photographer friend, he, he immediately texted me, are you okay? All of a sudden, I started getting all this support and it just made me feel like it was a hundred times Christmas. It felt like I felt so loved and I started crying. I'm like, you know what? While I feel emotional right now and passionate, I'm, I'm going online and I don't do that a lot. But I'm like, you know what? People need to understand not the, the BS that we're gonna cover, yes, but also how important supporting people is. Yeah. There are so many, you know, we have a mental health crisis and we don't, who knows when, I hate the word normal, first of all, and who knows one person, I want you to just name one person that you know in your entire life that doesn't have issues. That's not living. So we all have mental issues and some are, are, are you know, worse than others, but mental health is so important and some people feel so alone. And so how overwhelmed I felt, I, I wanted to just thank everyone for that. And then also say, pay it forward, you know, keep doing that. If someone else that you don't even know, you know, is sad, reach out and tell them you, you're okay. You know, I'm sending you a hug through the ethers, whatever. That's why I wanted to post in that moment. I'm glad you did. And it's really great to see that um, everybody's kind of evolving like this. The journalists like get it, like read the room. Nobody mm -hmm. wants to tear people down anymore. That's not mm -hmm. where we're at. It's 2023. Right. We are like trying to stick together. We're trying to get healthy. We are trying to support each other. And it's like this whole tearing down is just. It's, it's so old. Mm -hmm. It's so 2008. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. I know. <laughs> I made it. Yeah. 2000 and late. Yeah, 2000 and late and stupid. It's just, it's not acceptable. It's not kind. And you no. don't know what people are going through. Like on my 50th, I was in um, urgent care. I actually ended up in the ER and was admitted to the hospital later. But they're like taking pictures of me trying to walk back to my car from the urgent care. And they're like, Nicole Eggert out on her 50th birthday running errands. And it was like, no, I was trying to not like barf and diarrhea on myself <laughs> and get back to my no, car. No, 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 she can't walk anymore. She's in a walker. She's yeah. turning 50. She's cracking her bones. Yeah. Uh -huh. But you know what I realized when I was so pissed and I'm like, you guys don't even realize how unsafe this is. I have a kid. I have a no one gives a crap. You know, no. those, the paparazzi. Good if something should happen to you. Fantastic. Because we'll be there. Right. Yeah. Let something happen to someone you love. Oh, we'll be there. Like just gives them more money, more fuel, more. And I so I just realized, you know, right, whatever. Like you said, it's just so old. Now let's just put the focus on the good folks, you know, on the yeah. good people that are out there supporting and doing good and being brave. And 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 you know, the women, there's a lot of women coming coming out now, celebrities that have been notoriously, you know, they're just beautiful and known for their just gorgeousness that are coming out without makeup and that are older now and showing their wrinkles and fine lines. And I think it's, it's amazing. It's inspiring. It's courageous. I don't know if I'm there yet, to be honest with you. I'm having, I have, I have a really hard time with my own self-esteem issues and I'm trying to raise a 17 year old and you know, you have two girls. It's like, 
you can't give away what you don't know. It's the, you know, you can't teach what you don't know and it's a, or give away what you don't have. And it's like, I'm working on it. But when you see things like that, you know, it's harder. Sure. It did. We're human for God's sakes. We're not robots. Yeah. You know, we're human. We have feelings. I mean, I know that it doesn't matter, but I also think it's sad when like you have celebrities who have a baby and they like a brand newborn and there's a million dollar price tag on that baby's head. So, so they're, you know, they're forced to release their own picture yeah. to just stop that. It's like the world that we're living in. Really? I like, that's disgusting. It's disgusting. It is. I know. I wish we could go back. Yeah. You know, that's what we you know Eric, I, I had a chance to, to meet you one time before. And uh, I mean, you're an extremely sweet person. And, and one of those people that, that Nicole says, you're going to love her. And and yeah. I said, you know, you're one of those people that you, you always, I always say you root for good things for good people. And when I saw you so upset on Instagram, it was it was hard to watch. I mean, for someone that feels like they, they know you just a little bit, it was hard to watch. Let me ask you about, you mentioned your 17 year old daughter. Yeah. Was it hard for her to see this happen to her mom? She doesn't watch my stuff. <laughs> she's, <laughs> she's, you know what I'm saying, right? Do you, you have kids, right, Dave? I do. Yeah, you, I do. Son, yeah. you know, the teenagers, like they don't, it's cringy. It's very cringy. First of all, I'm not allowed to even have like a TikTok. It's okay. I, I went on Snapchat, but I don't really post anything. I think I asked one of her friends to follow me on Instagram. Oh, I mean the conversation around that. So she does, I don't think she even saw the post and half the time I'll do a little story. Sometimes, sometimes I'll see her little like on it, but especially if I do a post and then if I do a, like a reel with any kind of music, she's like, mom, <laughs> it's so cringy and people don't watch reels so so no i don't think she saw it <laughs> good, good yeah it's better i don't want her to see her mom upset good yeah thank you dave yeah i don't think she watched it <laughs> she would have been really crazy funny. anyway she would have been like oh. I, I just i said to uh, my daughter i need to make a tiktok account but every time i open it it's your account on my phone are they connected um like how do i start over and she's like what <laughs> You're such a dork. Yeah. Yeah. Why I, do you need a TikTok? I was like, I just do. It's business right, stuff. Just, right. It's TikTok. business. Uh, Definitely a different time than when we were young. Oh, God. Thank God. Thank God she is nothing like I was. Oh, I thank God every day that she's nothing like I was. <laughs> Literally, I would be terrified. I would just be going out of my skin every day. I was a terrible kid. I was just wild, wild, wild. I was the out the window kid. You know what I mean? My mom busted me once. I ditched school, packed a bag, and went and sat at a bus stop at a route that she never took home. And the one day that she decided to take that route home from work, there who is this sitting at the bus stop? And she was like, oh, get in. Where are you going? Yeah, yeah where were you going? Boyfriend's house. Mm -hmm. Got um, in so much trouble. Yeah, but that was me. And she's a great kid. So I'm nothing but blessed. And now I'm knocking on wood. <laughs> Well, it's probably, I think too, it's like the, um, the way we parent, it's different, right? So like you learned everything like that you don't want to be, I don't know what you're, I, I can only speak for myself, but I kind of learned everything that I don't want to be and I don't want to do. And not that I've mastered it and not that I'm nailing it, but I, I think that there are things you can do that you kind of change a cycle and it makes it. Yes a little bit easier like i used to sneak out i used to be like okay but then i'd write my own mom a note i leave the note in my room like don't That's worry I'm just uh, around the neighborhood till the sun comes up but don't worry don't worry about me yeah, i'm just I'm there. guys and you know there'll be drugs but don't worry about me <laughs> i'll be home by sunrise i'm, yeah. I'm running the streets but don't, don't worry. worry don't yeah. worry well that was very thoughtful of you <laughs> I thought she was hard. Mad. yeah you know, I love what you said, though. That's what I think, too. You know, my mom was my best friend on the planet. She was my three times a day bestie on the phone. You know what I mean? Like nothing was off limits for our conversation. She was literally my best friend. And she uh, she passed a, a couple of years ago now. But when when I was growing up, um, you know, you go back and forth, but especially with with your mom, I think. And you're a daughter. You, you definitely have tough moments. But she and I were super good friends. Um, but I did learn a lot of things that I don't want to do. And you know, what was interesting is when I had my daughter, 
I thought I would be so much more understanding. And I think about some things I was, but to be honest with you, I was also angry. I, I didn't really see that coming, but there were some things that went on that I was like, how could that happen? Like, how could, you know, and I, I don't want to sound all judgy, but I like what you said about just doing better. And so hopefully then our girls, should they decide to have kids, then, then they do a little better. And then that's the idea, right? And then theirs do a little better. And, and I do think that's exactly kind of what happens. You evolve and then hopefully yeah. they do. They take from us, you know, the good, the bad, the ugly, and then they evolve as well. Yeah. And, you know, I think a lot of it has to do with too, like not, um, not pretending like we know everything. Like I don't, I'm sure you're the same with your girls. I'll let them know when I don't know something or like, yeah. let me get back to you on that one. Or I'm not sure what I think, or yeah, I messed up there. I apologize yeah. for like, you know, I'm not perfect. Cause my parents would always, they would, well, my mom would really like me to think that she was, she knew perfect. everything. It like ended, it began and it ended with that lady. Like there was yeah, nothing, tough. you could give me all the wrong information, but I needed to believe that that was what it was. Yeah. And, um, you know, I just don't think it's. Well, there's not a lot of room for you to discover who you are when that's going on. Right. Because your mom's always right. That's it's tough. Yeah. I'm yeah. sure there was a ton of love there, but at the same time, the way that sometimes the parents choose to show their love, I, I can say to a fault for me, I am the most helicopter mom I know. <laughs> and I'm in therapy. I'll tell you because because probably because I know what I did <laughs> because I do know, like, it's not helping me. It's almost, and it's not, and I trust my kid. Oh my gosh. Implicitly. Uh, I mean that. And she knows that she's never, ever given me a reason not to trust her. It's just the world out there that I'm terrified of for her. It's like literally the one time she, we live in a, you know, a nice, like there's a big complex here and there's a pool and she was like, mom, can I go to the pool? And I'm like, by herself. And I'm thinking, geez, Erica, you moved out when you were 17. Let your kid go to the pool. You know what I mean? So the one time I let her go to the pool and I go to pick her up because it was dusk into dark. So I go to pick her up at dark. She gets in the car and she's so uncomfortable and she feels, I, I can tell that she's like really uncomfortable and like shaky. You know, this older man is hitting on her and his friend. And she's by herself at the pool in the jacuzzi. And I, I haven't prepared her for that. I have not prepared her for that. She's a, you know, 17 year old, beautiful, gorgeous freaking thing, you know, and that stuff that just happens. It happens to everybody. You know, it's like, it can happen to you at the park, at the grocery store. It will at the library. What do you do? What do you say? What do you, you know, you're not obligated to do anything and just kind of going through all that stuff with her, but she's never alone. Like, thank God. I, that's how I feel. Buddy system. I learned a huge lesson. No more. Sorry. No more pool. You go to the pool when it's light out and you have to take a buddy. Like you do the best you can. You know, I just know that if there's anything that I'm doing, it's not allowing her to make more mistakes and to kind of be a little bit more independent. I'm really working on it, but, um, but it's hard for me. You know, she's been my whole world since she was little, like her dad he, and I were like he's been completely estranged from her. So she and I have been like this. And uh, it's uh, it's not about letting go because I don't want to be alone. It's about letting go because I'm afraid for her safety in this world, you know, especially yeah. with all this crap that's going on, yeah. you know, this, the social media and the paparazzi and just all that stuff and that ugliness and then the nasty, ugh, like I just, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely terrified. And it's and a strange time. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, go for it. I was just going to say, uh, she's th she thinks it all changes when she's 18. I'm like, mm, yeah, no. You can tell me, right. You can tell me you're 25 and trotting off to Spain. I go, okay, who are you taking? This is the world that we live in. You know, I don't care if you're 18, 17, or 20 going places by yourself for the most part. You know, I mean, I, I just, I don't trust it. I just don't trust it. It's interesting because I was, uh, when my girls, I, they're also, their fathers have been estranged and just good for nothing, to be honest. And mm -hmm. um, uh, so I was always very open and morbidly honest with them of everything from like yeah. watching the news to this is what could happen. This from when they were very young. And I, I was like, I fuck them up. I fuck them up, but they're not yeah. going to get taken advantage of. Right. Or they're going to at least be aware. Yes. And it's interesting because when my oldest was young, 
it was at a time, right, we're talking early 2000s, where things seem to be like, you have to be careful, but this is no longer the 80s and 90s. Right. You have to be careful, but men are like beginning to respect you, at least in public, a little bit more, somewhat. There was mm. some improvement from the 80s and 90s. And now here we are in 2023, um, and it's almost like you have the gentlemen that get it and that are like, okay. Wait, where is- are they? Can you hear? They're, they're there. They're there. Not- <laughs> two right here. Um, no, they're, they're there. I know some, but there's not. And there's the one who are openly disgusting again. Yeah. It takes yeah. Them right back to the 80s. And yeah. you're like, and so that's what my young one is going to grow up with. So I have to be really open with her and yes. she has to, you know, make her very aware. I mean, I see her walking and I see grown men. The other day I just saw a guy like, okay, rubber her neck. Chills. and I'm like, she's 11. She's 11 years old. Oh my God. That just, I, I'm cringing right now and I have chills right now. I, it, it, it upsets me to my core. And so also, I you know, I haven't sh- I haven't sheltered her in the way that she doesn't know what's out there. Like, if anything, like you, I have been so honest. And so this is what goes on. This is what happens if you try drugs once. You know, I'm sorry, because par for the course of being a teenager, that's sort of a rite of passage. So I'm like apologizing to you that you can't do drugs. But at the end of the day, you cannot do drugs. There's no coming back from. I just want to try this. And she knows that. Like, I have shown her, talked and about all of this stuff with her probably to the point of, you know, I don't want to scare her, but she needs to be aware. But the other equate part of that is that I haven't said, okay, so if this should happen to you, here's what you do. Like in terms of men, you know what I mean? Cause she's just now 17. So I, I, I'd love to say I'm so evolved and I'm so, you know, cause I'm certainly not naive, but I just, I didn't go there in my head with my kid yet. So let me ask, we talked about public figures at the very beginning of the show, Erica, and obviously yeah. you, and, you and Nicole became public figures at a young age. Would you recommend your line of work to your daughters? I have one daughter. Um, I mean, meaning Nicole's daughter and your daughter is what I meant. Oh, oh, <laughs> but I would you, well, sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Yes. Yeah, no problem. For both of us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, do you want to go first, Nicole? Oh, I've answered this. <laughs> <laughs> So here's the thing. I, as a setting aside in my emotions and feelings about my kid in general, the business, no, I would not recommend it for a whole variety of reasons. But as a parent, what I care about the most is my kids. And I don't want to sound cheesy. This is my heart and soul, her happiness, her passion, her drive. If she found that acting made her like light up, and that she she's doing a service or living her passion with that, then hell yeah, I'm gonna do everything I can to help you. Just as a business in and of itself, would I choose this for my kid? Oh no, 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 for so many reasons. But if, and you know what she hasn't? So I taught acting for a lot of years and um, just in terms of daycare, like when I was teaching, I'd put her in one of my classes, you know, or she'd do the dance thing, you know, how the little girls dance, you know, we dance from the age of five to whatever, I danced till I was 14, just the recitals, you know, the little, my kid has been the same always. She's always enjoyed the experience of choir or singing or dancing or acting. She's had fun creatively, but every single time it came time to perform anything in the class or the recital, she would say, I'm not doing it. Oh. And I would be like, you can't do that. Like even at the dance place, they make you sign a contract even at five, because if they choreograph something and there are eight people and one goes, it changes everything. Like you're in or you're out by May, right? And she would at the last minute go, oh no, I'm not going. And I'm like, oh yes, you are. And I'm not a tiger mom, but I'm like, we signed a contract. <laughs> what do yeah. I have to do with you? She does not like performing. She doesn't like being in front of the camera unless it's her own little selfie thing. You know what I mean? Even me, I'm like, I'm going to take pictures, mom. Oh, can I have one? No, I don't think so. Well, maybe if I like it. And then I literally see her post. She has a private post. I see her her post and I'm like, why don't, can I have that picture? And I literally have to pull it off her post yeah. to get a picture. Yeah. Steal them. I steal them. Right. You have to. It's the only way you're getting pics of your kids. Yeah. Great. So no, she doesn't like performing. She doesn't like being in front of the camera, but she loves playing she loves dig- like editing digital all the arts she loves she just doesn't want to you know share it professionally so 
Well, on the other side of that is that's that's a lesson for her in commitment, right? Like you committed to this, you signed a contract, you gave your word, you have to follow through. That's sort of a life lesson, right? We don't commit to things we don't actually want to do. do that. My yeah. kid is the opposite. She'll be so shy, like when she was in dance and all that, she'd be so shy in the class. But then yeah. when it was time to perform on stage, all of a sudden <laughs> she knew every step and she was on beat and like she was front and center. And giving wow. her, who's that? <laughs> You know? What just happened? Like, who is yeah. that kid? What? And then I was like, do you want to do it again? No, 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 no. No, it's terrible. I know. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny. I feel like Andy's best friend is like that. Shyest and most reserved, quiet. And then she got the role of Belle in Beauty and the Beast. And the child is on stage, like, singing and dancing. And I was like, who is that? Yeah. Who is that kid? You can't. Yeah, there is something you're right. It's, and it is a total opposite thing, isn't it? So that's I, I guess my child is the total opposite of that. Right. Which yeah. is both good. Like right. either way, however it works, but whatever you know, makes you happy, you know? That's right. Yeah. Because right. sometimes people like I'm I'm a lot like your daughters. I like the process of it, right? I like learning it, I like doing it, I like rehearsing right. it. I don't really like the performance of it and all of that either. Like right. I'd rather skip that part. I'm the same. I'm I'm absolutely the same. If I can you know, that's one of the reasons I love the podcast world, <laughs> to be honest with you. It's like, you know, it's natural, it's free flowing. It's, you know, my podcast was audio only as well. So that was really great. <laughs> you know, pajamas, if you like, but you're not just under that kind of scrutiny and pressure. And it's just a way to, you know, you can express yourself without without having to think about anything else. You know, that was the one thing on Baywatch for me. And I, I don't know about for you. And I'm sure, I'm not sure, but I would imagine that probably who knows what the percentage is 70, 30, because everyone's different. But um, I was always so self-conscious in that bathing suit, right? Every minute you have an acting scene to do that's written very serious and you're supposed to run into the water and pull someone out and start CPR and save their lives. And the crying mother's there and you're dealing with this really dramatic thing. It's so hard uh, as a, you have to do it just so that, you know, you can put yourself in that moment. But for me, it was always so hard. It's like, oh my God. Okay. So I just ran into the ocean. I just jumped out. My suit is up my ass. Yeah. I'm, you know, <laughs> I'm literally trying to save this woman's life, but this is, you know, the, the cameras are there and it's just like, oh, that kind of always like worrying about what's hanging out. What's, you know, I, I is that strap falling? Like, cause you know how you can feel the strap, right? Like, yeah. it's hurting this life. Don't, don't move the shoulder. Don't bring it. Huh? You know, like, right. Cause if you move, <laughs> like the thing is going to fall. I totally know what you mean. Yeah. It's very difficult. It really truly is. <laughs> you know, it's hard to act. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. So Erica, jump right from there. How how did you decide to do the role on Under Siege? I mean, that that's a, that was a yeah. big step. Well, um, so I started when I was like ten, and I had always wanted a serious acting career, and I made a lot of decisions that were push pull, push pull, push pull. You know, but you you feel like you're invincible when you're young, right? No matter what's gonna, there will be no obstacles for me. Or sure, I don't care. I'll hurdle over them. You know, it doesn't matter. Uh, under siege, first of all, the topless scene was not written in the script. I did two fittings at the big studio, the fit in Sun Valley. And in fact, I'll never forget that walking into my room to have my, it was a little 1940s tap outfit. Richard Gere was in another room and I was like, Oh my God. You know, I was so starstruck. No, that was not written in the script. That was decided by other people that that had to be there. Now I was so young and so naive and I didn't know my SAG rights either that I didn't want to do it. And I sat down with Andy Davis, who I adore, an amazing director and a good human who told me that the powers that be are saying I have to do it. They were really strong, you know, stronghold, strong arming me, whatever it is. And I, I, I cried. And the, and the reason there's a jacket in that scene is because I said, I, I get to wear a jacket. I'll wear a jacket without a top and I'll do, you know, something like this. And it ended up being way more than that, but it was not there. And I remember actually Tommy wow. Lee and Gary Busey sent me flowers on the day they closed the set. Cause I knew everyone knew how upset I was about it. People don't understand these things. Like, yeah, they make their judgments and they make, but had I known that I was so young, you know, 
you do not have to do any nudity. And in fact, you can sign it because people used to get sued all the time. You can sign a contract saying you're going to do this script. And if you don't want to do the nudity come the day, you do not have to. You do yeah. not have to. Wow. And I had no idea. So no, that it wasn't a decision I made. You know what I mean? The rest of the movie, the the that's what, 10 seconds? I don't know. And then the movie's two hours long. I'm in web gear up to here, you know, professional naval web gear. And it yeah. was a fantastic role. And I was really flattered because that role was small. And they kept rewriting it and rewriting it. And then, you know, they started talking their yada yada stuff. Oh, we'll do two more pictures together and we'll, but they made that role bigger as we went along. So I had a very good experience with it. And I auditioned my butt off for that. You know, you go in, you go in, you go in. And then back in those days with the real camera testing, you know, the, the makeup and the whole in front of the camera. So um, it was a natural step for me because I had always wanted to do films. So um, going from Baywatch, it's really why I left. One of the reasons I left um, was because I really wanted to start my film career. It's what I wanted. Uh, all along, you know. Doesn't everybody curious, know huh? Erica from ET? Like when you saw ET and you saw Erica in the science lab classroom, and you just were like, "Whoa!" Like Aww. girls, boys, everybody's jaw just dropped and was like, "So cute." Who is that? <laughs> Your so hair cute. blows. And I remember the first time meeting you on set on Charles in Church. I was like, "That's her." Like that's that. Oh, that's so sweet. Girl. God, and I felt the same way about you. You and you had your blonde hair down to your bum. You had a hair that was down to here. Oh my God! I just thought you're the most beautiful thing I've ever seen, like a little angel. Yeah, well, you had known, and I didn't. I don't really get like starstruck, and it just yeah. was like I was in awe of you. It was just Aww. one of those things of like, there she is. Like, oh, oh that's so cute. the same. And, like, yeah. Well, it was the small whole thing all over again. <laughs> but we were on Charles in charge. I was yes. Like, Yes, you know, right, oh. yeah, yeah, I was such a small part, you know, in ET, but I was just so, and it, I was 12, so, so that was weird, like the whole thing, you know, how I even got that role was weird. I was in an acting class and we did kids showcase, and because my scene partner, it was a father daughter scene, was an adult, we, we were the only ones that kind of qualified to go into the adult show because of his half. Oh, and there was a talent scout in the audience for Steven Spielberg who saw this scene and it happened to be a father daughter scene. Um, and I had a tough relationship with my dad growing up. Um, we, you know, I'm a, my, they divorced and left when I was five, my dad. So an amazing relationship today, I will say amazing, an amazing man. But at the time it was really difficult. So I was bawling in this scene and it would just, it, it hit really close to home. So I got a call asking me to go in and meet this guy, Steven Spielberg, um, for some movie about a boy and an alien. And I was like, <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm 12 years old. What do I know? I don't know him. I don't know who he is. A boy and an alien. What? Um, and I was like, okay, you know, uh, I think I wanted to model at 12. So like, you know, your priorities. <laughs> yeah. so I went in and I met him and he was the nicest, nicest man ever. And he's like, Hmm, you're quite tall for my age at 12. I, I got to, I'm, five, five, I'm not tall, but I was there at 12 and then I stopped. So he's like, hmm, you're kind of tall because my lead actor is very short. He was like, well, do you want to be in this movie? And I was like, okay. And, so, and that was that. And what an incredible, and I cried, I cried, I cried, I cried when I had to do the kissing scene. So he came and um, talked to me and my mom and oh. told us what a closed set was. And then Henry was upset too. And Henry was in a girl haters club. Oh, <laughs> and he was 10 and I was 12. I was an older woman. So for him, it must have been horrifying, right? Uh, so he went and talked to Henry and then he closed the set and it was all Stephen's magic. You know, it certainly it wasn't scripted that the poor guy who gets falls down to get a, a frog to catch a frog. And then Henry steps on top of him so that it's like his step stool so he can kiss me. All of that was just Stephen's creation walking around going okay we're, yeah, we're gonna do this and that and it was just a it was such a cool experience and then we saw it at the hollywood dome theater me my grandma and my and my little sister and my mom and i just sat there and my mouth hit the ground because all i knew is this was some movie about a boy and an alien 
Yeah. And then I saw this and I, I was just slack on the whole, it was such an incredible experience. It was really a, it's magical, a great scene. Magical yeah. little scene, right? Wow. Magical yeah. Stuck out. It was one of the best scenes in the film. It, it, everybody great. remembers it. Thank you. Well, it was a good, good, a good thing to be a part of. Yeah. Erica, just curious as, as Steven Spielberg's career has taken off. I mean, he always says, you know, ET was, you know, kind of the launching point. Yeah, he had big things before that, but that was a whole different direction for Steven Spielberg. As he continues to to make magic and maybe maybe the best ever in Hollywood, mm-hmm. are you, how proud of you to see, you know, I was in one of his movies. I mean, that that's incredible. It's amazing. It's amazing. And it's a classic movie and it's his movie. And I, I get, I feel like I'm just, you know, this tiny little sliver of this iconic thing that's always going to be there like gold and I feel really proud and I feel really grateful that's what I feel like because because you know all of this stuff is the chances right you know I'm doing a kid showcase and then well since you have an adult you do an adult so like it's just so weird it's life it's so surreal so that this happened I'm just so I'm really grateful it's like a little tiny miracle I love it see I blew my I blew it with him in the room because I was auditioning for the Drew Paramore and he kept me back and he kept bringing me back and he said you know you have just got one of the coolest most unique voices i was like really because i hate it <laughs> so sassy oh, you're cool so sassy always <laughs> i know yeah like such an idiot um but you know. <laughs> oh, i feel like we've all had those i kept getting called back for i forget which one it was but ben stiller so i'm ben and is talking with me and i don't know what i was going off on but man did i talk myself right out of that role we were in a debate i'm debating him about relationships or something and i of course never got called back after that second call back and because i don't know what happened <laughs> what was it for do you remember what it was for i do believe that i know leslie mann ended up getting the role so if you can think of this was a produced by ben stiller movie with Leslie Mann. I, I just I can't remember what it was, but but I do remember like what is wrong with you? <laughs> just not that you have to agree with everything, but don't be like cantankerous, you know. Just like, <laughs> like yeah, you know, it's just like what is? Oh my God. Okay, next. <laughs> Sorry. You know, yeah. <laughs> this shit happens. You're in oh, the moment. Yeah. I know. I've had like actors like there's like a kiss in the scene and we're reading the scene and then he actually goes for it. It's like, what are you doing? Stop it. Right. Stay over there. Right. Or don't put your tongue <laughs> in my mouth. Yeah. yeah. Like weirdo. This is a Hollywood oh. kiss. Yeah. Take your movie. Yeah. I'm not the one. I'm not the girl. Yeah. Bye. <laughs> I'm doing this with every girl Bye. that comes to the room. Like barf. <laughs> I won't say any names. So. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. Well, I'm so happy you shared everything with us. We love it. We love Thank you. you. I, I love you. And I also want to say congratulations to you um, for the American Dream They Watch's docu-series because I'm really proud of you. So, you know, Nicole, for those of you out there who are under rocks, you know, are <laughs> producing this and co-creator of this whole thing, and it's a big deal. And it's I'm so excited for it because it's going to be so authentic in real really real like what we're doing here right now yeah but from all the cast you know yes. what i mean it's just a gem it's like i'm i i'm just really excited for you and for everybody and so i'm proud of you i'm so proud of you uh congratulations yeah. thank you and on thank this you. podcast you're doing amazing listen i you know i i'm at a different place i'm a different person you know you talked about interviews were like horrifying to you me too appearances right. interviews i needed like a month to prepare because i was a, yes. a, a cuckoo now it's like you know i'm a totally different person different headspace you know different stage in my life and it's just um mm-hmm. i'm not as scared anymore i'm You're not shy. relaxed right yeah yeah just like whatever you know, really just let those walls just relax a little bit and you know yeah. not take myself seriously and like you know kind of be proud and be happy of all the nonsense i've been through and gone through and conquered and um yeah. we all have and yeah. um 
and it's now it's like now it's like those sharing years, right? Now we can yeah. look back in math and go, oh, look at what an idiot you were. Like, I'm moving it forward too, right? Like what you've learned, especially raising daughters, right, and sons. It's like you know, just paying forward all that stuff in a different, in a different way, in a more relaxed way than our parents did, right? There's no like it, we have to be right or wrong. Like just being able to be comfortable in your skin, right. Um, that in and of itself, I'm still working on that. You know, I uh, aesthetically, like on the outside, I'm 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 pretty comfortable with who I am on the inside, and and I I'm not done. We're, we're hopefully always evolving every single day and and thereafter. You know, but um, ah, I'm still working on this being okay with aging thing. I'm not having an easy time. Um, not either. Well, you look, I mean, you honestly, and I'm not blowing smoke up your ass, like you look beautiful, like you look gorgeous. And like, you. I, I, you know, it's very graceful and, and um, like you should be very proud and, Thank you know, it's very attractive to a lot of people. And when you embrace it and when you're good on the inside, it really, you glow on the outside. Yeah. Yeah. I, th I, I mean, I do. I think that. I can stand back and, and say, yes, that's, you know, always when you feel good about yourself on the inside, it always radiates on the outside. I, I, I definitely believe that. So, so working on that. <laughs> you know, and listen, it's not easy. Like I look, I look in the mirror and I laugh. I'm just like, okay, I have to laugh. Cause if I don't laugh, you know, I'll stand there naked out of the shower and I'm like, Why? God, <laughs> this become. what's happening? Yeah. <laughs> And then I just have to go, you know what? You had it so good for so many years. <laughs> like, God, it's not irritating, right? When you look back five years ago and you're like, remember how you complained and complained and you're going, oh, if only, you know, and you do it every year. And I, I have, I have tried so hard. I feel like I've let my guard down a little bit lately, but I've tried so hard with my kid about the, don't use the F word. Do not use fat in this house. Do not ever, you know, or I'm taught or self-deprecating or whatever. That went out the out window, the window. And it's terrible because now I see her going, you know, I don't know. Maybe I'm like, oh my God, you're a pixie. You're a tiny little 17 year old. Please don't do that. <laughs> then it's like, well then tape your mouth shut. But it's also yeah, hard. Really, it's not but, you. It's it, the internet. I mean, let's face right. it. And the paparazzi and like, you know, all this horrible stuff. It's just hard back to full circle. Well, listen, Erica, you're never going to be as young as you are today. Thank you. Good point. Good point. And if you just if you just live for today, because you don't even know if you can be here tomorrow, so quit worrying about if it's gonna get worse. And girl, the only constant is change. So the only constant is change. And like I traded being overweight for like loose skin in places I never had before. And I'm like, you know, no one's seeing you naked anyway. Right. <laughs> Because that'll so be another thing. Your clothes and feel good and walk around than being naked and being plump and it all being like right. filled it out. Is. It just is what it is. And yeah, one or the other, other, right? Another show on celibacy or and or is it celibacy? Is it a choice? <laughs> no. Or is it just like <laughs> it just the way it is? Whatever it is. Yeah. Right. I haven't put right. my finger on that one yet, but yeah. um yeah another yes. time you know it's six one half a dozen of the other as that old saying goes you know yep. you can't have it all at all at the same time so yeah as long as you put it all at some point. <laughs> all right you guys thank you so thank much you. for having right. me i know it's such a pleasure thank you erica see you guys bye, bye. take care bye bye all right. Wow. That was cool. That was cool. That was a lot of stuff that you threw out there. That was, that was a lot of fun. I'm glad to hear she's doing great. You know, that's the big thing that she's doing great. I was really worried and, and sad when I saw her Instagram post, but man, she's, she rolls she's with the punches. She's you just, know, she's a, she sure is. Yeah. She's she a strong sure spirit and a survivor and she always will be. So she, you know, I wasn't worried about her like that. It just, I sympathize, you know, it's like, exactly. They always get exactly. the, good, you know, the good ones upset. Exactly. Right. All right, so real quick, we're, we're gonna. I'm gonna ask you two questions because we've run run long on the show, so I'm gonna give you two. But again, your chance to ask Nicole questions. Again, it's Nicole's mailbag. All you have to do is go to the website, perfectlytwistedpod.com, and we will uh, basically ask Nicole questions that you have for. Her. So Nicole, I'm gonna throw two at you that I pulled aside. Okay. Uh, you're so much fun to watch in Hallmark and other TV movies. Do you think you will do more? Ask Hallmark. Okay. Good. 
My wife, by the way, watches every one of these. Absolutely. She's the biggest absolutely. Hallmark fan of all time. Yeah, absolutely be open to it. They're so fun and the, the schedule they work on is ideal and um, always been a pleasure and they've always done well and people are always, you know, loving them. So yeah, of course I would. Awesome. That's good. That's, that's good to hear in my house at least. Uh, tell us something that would surprise people about your life now. <laughs> um, I'm doing a podcast. Um, <laughs> something surprising well it depends on who you're asking because like to some people they would be surprised that i'm pretty much um, a hands-on mom all the time i don't have nannies i don't have hired help i do it all myself i work around the clock um i do everything i run i run the household i run the business i run the financial i provide i work i hustle i mom i do all of it i cook i clean um so that might be surprising to people because People might think that, you know, this is some well-oiled machine that just gets done by, you know, a village. It doesn't. Um, something else, uh, I listen to gangster rap music in the car loudly. Good, good. Do you have an artist, a special artist? Oh, you, oh I have a lot. I have a lot. Okay. Let's not, we're All not right. even going to go there. Yes. Um, <laughs> I really, I, but 90s is like my, my ultimate Me jam. Too. Mm -hmm. right. I love me it. Too. You'll never Good get deal. that. You'll never take that away from me. Uh, but I did want to ask everybody, you know, apparently it's really important. We need reviews and we need ratings. Um, when you go in and like, even if you only want to give us one star or if you want to go for it and give us the five stars, can you go on um, wherever you listen to your podcast and go ahead and give us a rating, leave us a little note, a little review. Um, we are going to start doing a giveaway. So if you leave a review, we are going to do a monthly giveaway where um, all the names who um, left a review, we will put into a hat and do a drawing and send you something special. So if you could do that for us. We really appreciate it. You know, we're just trying to get trying to get things going over here. And um and yeah, and we appreciate you watching and we appreciate you subscribing and checking us out on all social media. Dave Palais, Perfectly Twisted. Um, give us a like, give us a follow, give us a subscribe. I usually I try to answer back. Uh, so thank you. And we're having a blast doing this. So Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Nicole, thank you again. That was awesome. Erica was great. And we'll see everybody great. next week. It's great. Yeah. Okay. See you guys.